Let's be honest, there are many supplements out there that are just a waste of money. In this video, I'm going to give you the top six supplements that are just not worth it in terms of the cost. And I'm also going to give you some alternatives to some of them that are much cheaper and more effective. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. Do it! The first group of supplements that are a waste of time are these different kinds of creatine. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of the regular creatine creatine monohydrate. This is the form of creatine that has the most research that it is effective for improving physical performance and also having all of the other health benefits related to brain aging and overall longevity. It's just that there are dozens of different kinds of other forms of creatine out there that are much more expensive and not even that effective as the regular creatine monohydrate, such as creatine HCL, buffered creatine, creatine ethyl ester, etc. Now, these different types of creatine were created so that supplement manufacturers could, you know, come up with like a certain problem that creatine is causing you some sort of digestive issues, creatine is going to give you hair loss, creatine is going to mess up your kidneys or whatever, and they create this new form of creatine saying that this new form of creatine doesn't have those negative side effects, where in reality the regular creatine monohydrate doesn't have those side effects either. It's just that they create a problem and then they offer you a solution, which in the form of this scenario is the new form of creatine that you should take. So you don't need to take any other fancy form of creatine, you can just take the regular creatine monohydrate which is the most effective the most researched one the safest and is also the cheapest out of all these different forms of creatine the second supplement that i think might not be worth it is spermidine now i have talked about spermidine on the channel before and i do think that it's a very beneficial compound and there are some studies showing that dietary spermidine intake is associated with reduced all-cause mortality and reduced cardiovascular disease now the issue is that those studies are done on dietary spermidine which you can get from certain foods like mushrooms vegetables cheeses some meats and wheat germ and spirulina and those kind of foods so healthy foods already have a certain amount of a spermidine and a higher dietary intake of spermidine is what's associated with the reduced uh, mortality risk. We don't have any data about the longevity benefits or increased life expectancy benefits of uh, supplemental spermidine. So it's just, I think it's probably not worthwhile to take the supplemental form of spermidine because you want to focus on the dietary spermidine anyway. And even then, there are some sources of spermidine that you can consider a supplement like chlorella, spirulina, wheat germ. They are very high of uh, spermidine and they're still much cheaper than the spermidine that you get from a supplement. So if you want to boost your daily spermidine intake, which is, I think, a smart idea, it's worth to uh, boost your spermidine intake, then get the spermidine from chlorella, spirulina, algae supplements, and uh, also like wheat germ. And then make sure you eat the dietary spermidine as well from different vegetables, mushrooms, cheeses, and some meat. The third supplement on the list is NMN and nicotinamide riboside. <laughs> so that's another, maybe a controversial one, especially from my channel who have, I have have like covered the benefits of NMN before and I do think that NMN as a supplement is very effective and it does like even subjectively if you take it you would feel more energy and you would feel like the benefits uh, from taking that there are studies showing that NMN does improve parameters of metabolic health and uh, increases your NAD levels which is beneficial for longevity and anti-aging but whether or not it's worth it is uh, slightly different like yes if you're let's say 60 and above then NMN would be probably in my personal snack that I would take it every day like 1000 milligrams every day all the time because at that age your natural NAD levels are somewhat declining if you're in your 20s 30s and 40s you probably don't need to take NMN or nicotinamide riboside for that matter every day and uh, it's certainly quite expensive so you probably won't notice that big enough effect that would justify the higher cost of uh, NMN. Only if you have low levels of baseline NAD levels, whether that be because of not sleeping enough, circadian rhythm mismatches, poor lifestyle, being overweight, not exercising enough, those things will reduce your natural NAD levels. And that, in that scenario, it makes sense to like boost it up with uh, this NAD booster like NMN or nicotinamide riboside. If you're feeling tired and exhausted during the daytime, then you first should look at your sleep and exercise. Are you overtraining and are you sleeping enough? Because you know, fixing your sleep is free and fixing your workout is also free. So before you start taking some sort of a supplement that raises your energy levels and like makes you feel better, like fix the underlying issue of why you might feeling exhausted. A much cheaper alternative for people who are already doing everything right 
to like keep their NAD recycling active is niacinamide. So niacinamide or niacin or just any like vitamin B3 is going to feed into the salvage pathway of NAD recycling. And that is going to be beneficial for just keeping your NAD levels uh, recycled and higher at a baseline level. Even if you're doing like pretty, you're following a pretty healthy lifestyle, in that scenario, you should take niacinamide only when you have certain like chronic conditions or if you're above 60 or, or like 50 or something like that. Only in that scenario, I would say that taking NMN or nicotinamide riboside is uh, worthwhile. You were in it to win it. Supplement number four is going to be probiotics. You know, the issue with those probiotic supplements is that you don't know necessarily if uh, that particular strain of probiotics is what you need so you could take like some random strains and you might not benefit from that at all and you actually might get some negative symptoms from that like you could easily cause yourself SIBO if you take like some random probiotic supplements or if you just take them in large quantities or too much so probiotics are something that you certainly need to supplement based on like your gut health right now and then based on that you can choose what kind of a probiotic you need number five is going to be BCAs and EAAs so uh, certain Certainly BCAs are a huge waste of money because you only get three of the branch chain amino acids out of the nine of the essential amino acids. So if you were to ever consider supplementing extra amino acids, then make sure that it is the essential amino acids, EAAs, that has all the nine essential amino acids. Because to trigger a protein synthesis and to support muscle anabolism, then you would need all of the nine essential amino acids. So the BCAs, you only get three of them out of the nine. And if you take the BCAs, then you would you only use it mostly for energy production so you're just creating pretty expensive urine and uh, you're just using it for like exercise performance it doesn't really have that significant ex exercise performance boost like you could take like dextrose or deribose or just you know plain sugar and you would get a bigger exercise performance boost uh, probably than just uh, taking bcas if you are getting adequate protein intake every day you're hitting your daily protein goals then the amino acid supplementation even with the eaas is uh, not really you're not gonna see any like significant benefits from that because you're already getting adequate amount of protein into your diet now the only exception is that you could take the essential amino acids in the fastest state if you're fasting let's say you're doing a 16 and 8 type of uh, intermittent fasting or even one meal a day then in that scenario taking the eaas in the fastest state in the morning is worthwhile because it's going to reduce some of the muscle catabolism and you're going to maintain more muscle tissue like i've experienced that when i'm taking eaas in the fastest state i do notice the benefits in terms of maintaining uh, lean tissue but uh, at other times if you were to eat breakfast lunch and dinner then you certainly don't need the essential amino acids even granted that you're getting adequate protein for your day big mistake and the last supplement on the list is going to be resveratrol so i've made a few videos about resveratrol as well and the main reason is that it's not really like a longevity supplement <laughs> like there is like almost no actual human studies showing that it has any like longevity benefits there are a few uh, resveratrol studies showing that it does improve your lipid profile cholesterol levels and uh, just glucose regulation but if you're like healthy you follow the healthy lifestyle you exercise regularly you're at a good body composition then you shouldn't really expect any like longevity or lifespan extending benefits from uh, resveratrol so there you have it this is the list of the supplements that are pretty expensive and i think that they're not worth it of course some of these supplements in some situations are worth it like i do think that taking eaas in certain situations is worth it and uh, you can also take nmn and nicotinamide riboside in certain situations like i take nmn if i'm experiencing some sleep depth or uh, jet lag and in that scenario it is quite worth it but on our everyday use i'd much rather take something that is much cheaper and more suitable for my age which is the niacinamide if you want to try out some of the supplements that I think that are worth it, such as collagen peptides, creative monohydrate, hyaluronic acid, berberine, and vitamin D3, then check out donotage.org. Use my code SEAM for a 10% discount. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is SEAM. Stay optimized, stay empowered.